part two of the Nivets Pass features the western descent from the summit all the way down to the crossing of the Olifants River. The road descends through a series of well-designed long loops and curves and then follows a steady line south down an adjacent hillside before turning west again and altering to a gentler gradient past some large sparkling blue farm dams before arriving at the Olifants River where the low-level bridge is frequently submerged in the winter rainy season. The farm at the end of the pass is called Credo Kranz and motorists are cautioned not to treat the crossing of the Olifants River lightly. Even if the bollards are showing, it could prove fatal to attempt this 200 meter wide crossing in a normal car. Even 4x4 vehicles should stop and the bridge should be given the if you can walk it, you can drive it mandatory test. Anything deeper than a 200 mm depth should be treated with the utmost respect. There are several notable mountains in the Cedarberg range, including Sneeuwberg at 2,026 meters and Tafelberg at 1,969 meters. Tafelberg, which translates into Table Mountain, should not be confused with a Table Mountain in Cape Town. Other notable natural landmarks include the Maltese Cross, the Wolfberg Arch and the Wolfberg Cracks. The dominating characteristic of the area is sharply defined sandstone rock formations of the Table Mountain group, which are often reddish in color. This group of rocks contains bands of shale, and in recent years a few important fossils have been discovered in the layers. The fossils are of primitive fish and date back 450 million years. The summers here are very hot and dry, whilst the winters are wetter and cold with typical annual rainfall in the low-lying areas of less than 700 mm. The higher peaks receive a dusting of snow in winter, and the summer days are typically clear and cloudless. Due to the clear skies most of the year, it makes an excellent site for sky watching and has its own amateur observatory at the Dwarsrafi farm. The predominant vegetation is Mediterranean fynbos in the wetter south and west, changing to semi-desert scrub in the north and east. The endangered clan William Cedar and the snow protea are endemic to the area and found only in the more remote areas high up in the mountains. In caves and overhangs throughout the area, sand rock art can be found, evidence of the earliest human inhabitants. European settlement brought forestry and some agriculture and led to massive destruction of the local cedar trees with thousands felled for telephone poles, housing and furniture. The European arrival also led to the elimination of the sand population. In the north, the old Moravian mission station at Wuppertal still remains the heart of a small subsistence farming community and home to a local industry producing felschooner, traditional soft leather shoes. The Cedarberg was also possibly the southernmost battleground of the Second Boer War. A small band of Boer guerrillas penetrated into this area from the Boer republics hundreds of kilometers to the north, hoping to stir up popular support amongst the local farmers of Dutch descent. In this they failed, the farmers may have had little sympathy for the British, but they had a fair notion of who was going to win the war. It is said that the Boer commandos were confronted in the Cedarburg by a lone Englishman who ordered them to surrender. They laughed at him because he was one and they were many and tried to reason with him, pointing out the hopelessness of his position. He refused to back down and was in the end shot dead. The place where he fell is today called Engelsmans Kloof. If you intend driving this pass, it's important to watch part one first as it contains important information as well as the Google Earth orientation clips.